Close your eyes and watch your breath. Make up your mind you're going to stay with the breath all through the session, all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out, and then the next breath, then the next breath. Keep on top of each breath as it's happening. And as for any other thoughts in the mind that go someplace else, you just drop them. Say you're not, they're not in line with your original determination. So I follow them. Our problem is we like to follow our thoughts because we think they might be entertaining or interesting or tell us something important. But you'll have to learn how to step back from your thoughts sometimes, because sometimes your thinking can take you in all sorts of strange directions and you lose your perspective. So you need a place to step out. At the same time, once you've made up your mind to do something good, you want to stick with it. This is a quality that the Buddha himself developed, and he teaches that it's an important part of the meditation, it's an important part of life as a whole. Otherwise, we're like dust motes in the air. A little wind comes and we get blown around. We have no idea where we're going. We're just kind of floating here, floating there, up, down, in and out. Life doesn't have any direction unless you give it a direction. That's why the Buddha said having yourself well directed is one of the blessings of life. And it's also a protection, especially at this time of year we're about to enter the rains. It's usually a time where people take the time of the three months to decide that they're going to ramp up their practice, accelerate their efforts, find some aspect of the practice that they're weak in and try to strengthen it. For instance, if you're weak in your precepts, you try to strengthen your precepts. If you're weak in your concentration, strengthen your concentration. If you're weak in your restraint, look into it. Restraint applies to two things. One is the things you take in from outside and then the things that come out of you. Restraint over your mouth is one thing, it's what, what you say to other people. But also there's restraint about what you take in. We spend lots of time on the internet these days looking at things that really are not of any real importance. They're entertaining, they're interesting. They have what they call clickbait. You know what you know, bait is designed for? It's designed, it's designed to get fish hooked. They're trying to hook you. So you might say, spend less time during the next few months, spend less time on the internet. <laughs> Or be very strict with yourself on what you look at, and then when there's a temptation to check out the news, check out this, you say, nope, that's not what I'm here for. Stop it. That way you get some control over your life. This is the purpose of this tradition we have for the three months, to put some more control over your life in ways that you haven't exercised control normally, and then get used to it in the course of the three months. Use your discernment to decide what's a good area where you can practice. And then be truthful. In other words, stick with your original determination. Be willing to give up the things that get in the way, and try to keep your mind calm as you're giving things up. If you spend all your time thinking, I'm missing this, I'm missing that, there's no calm there, and it's not going to last. But when you're giving up something, remember, you're making a trade. It's not deprivation, you're making a trade. And there are good things that are going to come. The good things that come when you observe the precepts, when you're more able to spend time in concentration, when you're more restrained in your behavior. Don't think of these things as prisons for you. They're opening up new possibilities in other areas of your life, the huge areas of your life, huge areas of your mind that get obscured if you're just wandering around wherever you like to go. Your immediate likes and your deeper desires in life for true happiness that get ignored. But here you're opening up the possibility that there is a true happiness that comes when you train the mind. And so give it a try. Find some aspect of your practice that needs, needs work, and say for the next three months you're going to work on this. And you find that it makes a change in your life. As Sean Fung used to say, it becomes a monument of goodness that you're creating with your life. So add another stone to that monument. So you can look back in your life and say, oh yes, there was that time when I really did make an effort. I'm glad I started doing it and I stuck with it. That's the kind of thing you want to look back on. So as I say, you read, there are certain news you'd like to hear, we'll go out and do that. If there's some things you'd like to look back on, we'll do them now. <laughs>